Hi, it's Charlie. Welcome to Monday's video and hope you're very well. I've titled this video uh, Why I Use Tight Stops and because it's, uh, it was, I was thinking about Friday's uh, live trading and it was, it's a perfect example as to when to use tight stops. Um, there are times when you don't use tight stops, you can't use them and there are times when you do. And um, on Friday I was able to use tight stops and it depends on the type of trading that I'm doing. If I'm trying to catch a you know a pullback low then I can probably use tight stops if I'm not trying to use a pullback low then I'm trying to and I'm I'm need to give a market more space then that's what I do but anyway let's go over this this is a great example here and I took took a screenshot of the account on Friday as um, at the end of Friday but we'll go through that in a minute but if we rem if you remember back to Friday's trading I think somewhere over here uh, about 05 was my first attempt at a, a long on Aussie dollar if you remember I was trying to get long Aussie I how had that view that my analysis was calling for the Aussie to close go up uh, on Friday which it did eventually but um, but not without me losing first. And so let's actually uh, recall. So I had that first trade, which was I was entered in around about 71.05. And I put those four units in at 71.05 and put a stop down near the low. I, I can't remember exactly where it was, but um, anyway, um, it was it was in the morning. Anyway, I was over here, I think. Somewhere maybe it was over here. And um, now I had a tight stop and it got stopped out. Didn't cost me too much, that first trade. If I had have just put a like a 20 pip stop behind that, I would have lost around about 600 pounds. Still fine, but it wouldn't have allowed me much ammunition to then take more trades, uh, you know, because um, to, to give it another go, so to speak. So it wouldn't have given me a lot of ammunition, and then I'd have been down 600 pounds. Instead, as of the close on Friday, as the close of the video, I was down about 300 or so pounds on on the Aussie dollar and that was after what three attempts on the Aussie dollar and then one attempt on the euro dollar as well so um, if you remember from that video so the real point is if by using my bands and in the right times I can t trade with really tight stops on some markets which enables me to have another crack at the whip and and that's a massive factor in that I, I could afford by combining um, varying position sizes with so reducing my position size on on Friday because because of the markets were a bit choppy uh, at that time and varying my position size down and 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 being able to use those tight stops enabled me to have what three attempts at it now don't get me wrong I still ended up still still lost at, uh, by the end of the video but if I'd have just put one 20 pip stop in then I'd have been down 600 pounds not 300 so that sort of gives you an idea of when you you should use tight stops because I'm showing you when I do these videos that sometimes you can get away with it and it enables you to have another trade for example if I'd have been trading um, and another factor is the varying position sizes and um, we had someone um, uh, email in or, or on the um, on the blog saying oh you know why do you vary your position size you know um, down or whatever and not just use the 1% rule so to speak um, well if I'd again if I'd have been risking 1% of capital could I have taken four trades which I which I took on Friday no because I'd have been down 4% in a day wouldn't be able to do it if I was trading at 1% at risk per trade I'd probably have a rule like a, at least a, a three you know a three strike rule and I'd be out sort of thing well the, at least by varying my position size, I can still have another crack at the whip, and um, that's a, a really important factor. So again, varying position sizes at the right time when when you know you've got a setup, but you you're not you don't have full confidence in it, but it's worthwhile trying it, like I did on Friday. Then um, then it allows you to stay in the game. And the really interesting thing was, I, I finished the video and I had to head off on Friday um, afternoon, and the market the Aussie dollar came back into the bands yet again I think it was over here 9 a.m. so that would have been around about 4 or 1 p.m. or so just after 1 p.m. UK time and so this was would have been where it was and I was about to leave and yet again it had come back into my bands there's reasons why price comes back into the bands so I gave it another shot with a four pip stop and thought okay I'll put I'll do that and and what I'll do is I'll add to it if it comes back up to 71 and if it gets up to 71 then it's it looked to me that's going to everything's going to be turning on the higher time frames and um and it probably is going to come higher so i just 
put those orders in. So I had the initial trade in. If it had just rolled over again, I'd have lost about four pips again, about 20 or 30 pounds again. That would have been it. So I only put one unit in. And then I added a single unit um, or put an order in um, to buy at 71. Anyway, I came back about half past three or so to see the Aussie dollar had come up. And I think it was over, over about here a couple of hours later and said, thanks very much. Um, at least I've um, made some back. So let's actually have a look at the account now. So these are all the trades that were there. If you remember on Friday, um, had th uh, three Aussie dot trades and uh, one Euro trade. So the Euro trade lost 252, if you recall. And then I had these clumps of the Aussie trade where the first one was all in around about 05. The second trade looks like it was in the 01s. And then the third trade, um, sorry, and this was the final Oh no, the final trades are down here. Um, so there was three trades there in the Aussie in, in amongst that. And then the, here was the final one in at 90 and then added a, um, had that order in at uh, 71 and I came back to find those up. And so in the end, actually on the Aussie dollar, I ended up turning around a £300 loss to a £21 gain uh, net on the Aussie dollar. So I actually only ended up down £230 on the day on the um, on those two on those two markets. Obviously the dollar CAD was running well up 1600 pounds and again it's just about when it comes to trading it's all about just being able to manage your risk and for me to take that final um, setup on the Aussie dollar in the afternoon and just let it have a bit of a run um, I didn't take much risk. It really wouldn't. It would have been thirty pounds loss if I'd have just if it had just rolled over again, but it didn't, and it carried on running. And all of a sudden, you've turned a three hundred pound loss into a, you know, a marginal gain. Um, so it's not about it's not about um, trying to make back all of your losses necessarily. Once you're down, you're down. I think I spoke about this on Friday. But if you get the opportunity to just say, okay, well, there's still another trade here. I'm still in the game because I'm well, I'm well under my one percent risk. That's a, a, over four trades. I'm still down less, uh, less than one percent at risk. Okay, I can afford to risk thirty pounds or so on a trade here, and um, and that was the end result. So. That's the, my point there, is that you can trade with tight stops when the moment's right, if you've got the right tools like I have here. And it was all, this all, all really came into being when I put the MBT together um, and, and enabled on, on my swing trades to have tight stops, relatively speaking, obviously they're swing trades, um, so that I could have those really good risk to reward um, runs. And I can apply sometimes though, some of those methodologies to my intraday trading that obviously I use in, in MBT for the swing trading. So I hope that helps today. So a big, just all about, you know, you can use tight stops and why I use tight stops um, at the right times with the right types of setups that I can get away with using my bands. And that and so therefore, I'm more than happy using a tight stop rather than having a wide stop. If I then just took a 600 pound hit immediately, then it, it, it really starts to narrow my options. Um, I could have traded again, but I would have then had to have um, dramatically downsized anyway. And if I'd have had another loss on that, I probably would have been down £800 for the day, as opposed to um, collectively between the Aussie and that Euro dollar, um, I, was, um, I was only down 500 But on the Aussie itself, only down 300 as opposed to, um, to it would have been around about 600 So a good lesson there, I think, in, in risk management. Um, I think I'd better leave it at that. It's already eight minutes in. I'm sure Kim's doing an analysis uh, video this morning anyway. So I'm recording this on Sunday night. Um, so I haven't really got too much more to say, but I'll tell you what, I will bring up the charts. Now, the Aussie dollar did, did close up um, on Friday, but bear in mind, Tuesday, we've got the RBA interest rate announcement, so we don't know what's going to happen there. Is it going to roll back over? Could do um, if they cut interest rates. We'll have to see on that one. Um, the euro dollar again had a nice push up in the end. All these moves happened in the mid-afternoon while I was out, but... Um, it did give back some of those gains, um, but it has come back into those bands. If you remember from last week's video, what did I talk about? I talked about this pattern that was here on the euro dollar, if I just um, zoom out, where across these highs, and I said we should want to come down and take these lows out, and it did exactly that. And so, um, was that last week or the week before? <laughs> week, I don't know. Um, but anyway, so we, it, it, did, it did do that. So, and now we've, 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 
satisfied that we've come down we've broken this trend line we've now come back into my bands on the daily charts I'm just waiting to see we've got big news we've got non-farm non payrolls on Friday so I'm not in a rush to do anything on a swing basis with the euro dollar just yet but um, but certainly uh, Friday's um, non-farm payrolls figures are going to be of real interest this week uh, anyway I won't go into too much more on analysis than that I'm really waiting on those non-farm payrolls figures to, to start to give us um, a real indication as to is this euro going to roll, roll over or is it going to start to chop around all week and then if the non-farm payrolls figures don't come in too good then we could start to see a, um, a rally come in on the euro and if if, if those non-farm payrolls didn't come in strong I've got a feeling they may well do but if they don't then this euro will i would be looking for it to come all the way back up to the 116 to 120 zone um, but that could take quite a long time to get up there but um, but if they're coming strong then we'll be looking for this um, euro dollar to start to break down and break down below these lows from July and August I shall leave that with you uh, food for thought for today have a great week be back on Friday